We're all doing some shopping for the spring, and I'm here to save you some time, so let's get right into it. Now, let's do this from the ground up. No better place to start than Nike. From Mero 5, you've seen them. Yes, they're as comfortable as they look. Yes, they look good in pretty much any colorway. You can rock them at the gym, athletically, athleisure, casually. Whatever you got going on, they work. Let's move on. P6000 is pretty much the exact same thing. Comfort, looks, versatility. Everything I said about the Romero 5s. That University Gold colorway is a neck snapper for sure. Lots of options with the metallic silver hits, of course. My favorite is the two-tone blocking on this one. Leaving the retro runners for something a little bit newer. The Air Max DNs just dropped on the most recent Air Max day. Cream and black always going to do it for me. This all-day colorway is pretty dope also. I think the contrast on this white and blue pair catches the eye the most for me. Just It just pops. So, I mean, Supreme did a pretty nice colorway, too, to actually introduce this model. Nike and Drake also collabed to drop the Knock the Hot Step 2 in this orange colorway. A lot of people aren't crazy about it, but I like the hat and the jacket enough to buy the shoes just to go with it. For all my hiking trail and gorp core enthusiasts, the Nike and undefeated Air Terra Humeras went out looking to if I were you. Well... Also, if I were me, because I have two of them. The Air Pegasus 2K returns in what I think is a gorgeous colorway. Similar look with these Kobe 4 girl dads. The Air Max Drift is another new one that has my attention. It's an updated take on the classic Air Max TNs, which they're also re-releasing classic colorways of. And I'm still recovering from Jordan fatigue, but these Nina Abney 3s can't be ignored. The brand that finally broke me from my Jordan chokehold was New Balance. Let's go there next. 96s. I started out with the fresh goods. I've been seeing people on my timeline flirting with the idea of getting them. Girls post them every other week saying these look nice. Should I? Ooh, maybe I should. You should. Just go do it. Trust me, comfortable. They look great. They hold up well. Put miles on mine. They still look new. I don't regret it. You won't either. The 1906 is another one I had to hop on as soon as they released. More fire coming in summer with Action Bronson's Baklava collabs. Those colorways are sick. I need both. Salehi Bembry already went crazy with his. Resells through the roof on those. For a more toned down pair, you have these beauties right here, which I absolutely need. Maybe not. Still want them. Also, these Ghanis from last summer. Fire in either colorway. Bold yellow or the more toned down pair here. 10 out of 10. Do recommend. The New Balance 1000 is coming back also. Joe Freshgood is kicking it off, but all of the GRs that I've seen look great too. Can't wait to see those drop. The Teddy Santis 990 series. You'll never be asking a lot of lizards I'm fresh and ease. Guarantee you that. Shout out to homie though. He was fresh. Yo, these 530s got the gym girlies going crazy. They look good in them every time I see them. Mills, I mean, they, they work for y'all too. Pretty much every New Balance. It doesn't really matter the model. 2002 R's, 610's, the A60 version 2. These black ones have just that little pop of patent leather and metallic silver to make sure you don't have black Air Force energy. They look like they can take a beating, leave them by the front door. These Joe Fresh goods in the pastel colors, whatever you're looking for, New Balance has. A lot of people's new, new favorite brand, Asics. Start with the 1130's. Um, low price shoe you can buy at a pretty cheap price all the GRs are just as dope as the collabs 2160 is the same deal all the GRs are just as far as the collabs a lot of them look similar so it doesn't really matter which ones you grab there there's no one pair that's hot it's just ASICS in itself is on fire right now um, the Gel Kayano 14s one of those pairs is actually the Gel Kayano Legacies there on the bottom left but still those are fire you see them everywhere. There's nothing else to really say there. Underrated model is the Gel Nimbus 9. Actually one of my favorites, as you can see right here. Not sure why I slept on, but that cream and black color is dope to me. And last but not least, these Sonomas, which are a real sleeper, but I think they're dope for one of those fits that nobody else will have on. If you're into that, these are those. Let's move on to Adidas. And if we're talking Adidas, then we have to talk about Sambas. So let's start there. Whether you get the regular pair or the Wells Bonner collaborations, they all look good in every colorway. You've seen them everywhere. You've probably had some. It's nothing new for me to tell you about these, but get some. They're good. The SL72s, however, they are just now bringing those back. The SL stands for super light, and they are. Take my word for it. 
these are a fire 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 model in any colorway and it look great with casual clothes too not just athleisure pretty much every adidas is the same in that regard rather it's speciales gazelles no matter what they're made for racquetball tennis they all just look great casually the london hits hard looks kind of like a bowling shoe but it's fire to me the dublin with that chocolate suede the marmos all very spring appropriate colors the gucci gazelles if you have a little bit more bag to spend looking for a pop of color anthony edwards too just for a hooping shoe man these things go hard so i'll just throw these in there at the end one brand I didn't see making the list earlier was Saucony, but they actually have been dropping so much heat, we can't ignore it. Heat is heat. Starting with the Grid Shadow 2, this pair from Bodega, lovely, grown and sexy. Also, this uh, J-Tips collab. He's been going crazy with the collabs over there. His Azura Grid collab went through the roof price-wise. The GRs look nice as well, which is the case for most of the shoes I'm going to recommend, including the Pro Grid Omni 9s. The Crystal Cave, to me, is the best of them all. Just color-wise, it moves when you see these in person. These are beautiful. And there are more muted colorways and more tonal colorways. I'm just highlighting the bright ones because this is a spring drop. But look, these J-Tips. J-Tips and Saucony is just a match made in heaven, man. This Astro Trail pack went really hard too with the stars of the show, pun intended, being the Shadow 5000 and the Azura Grid Wave. If you're okay with snapping necks and getting a thousand compliments on your shoes, then go ahead and grab you a pair. But like I said, the GRs, just the same. You can't go wrong. Nah, if you ain't no broke half, <laughs> these Bottega Veneta Orbits, man. These fire, they pop. When I say they catch the light and dance with it, that's what they do. You have to see them in person to know what I'm talking about, but... That's my luxury pick. Also, these Tyler and Louis V collabs. These are nice. I usually don't recommend many luxury sneakers just because once we get up to that price, I'd rather just get a pair of loafers. The craftsmanship that you can get from those is unmatched as far as tennis shoes goes. And also, you get triple the bitty score for about the same $1,300. So, yeah, loafers would be my pick for those. And if you're looking for something a little bit more colorful, I would say go with Marnie. Those Dior, if you like fan of prints or something you can get a colorful pop of color and animal print with these doc martens for the low ski also you can never go wrong with a doc martin boot especially when it's a doc martin and rick owens boot they hit at every level from the casual pair to the calf high ones to this crazy lace dmxl pair if we're talking boots in spring 24 we all know the cowboy boot reigns supreme so many different styles and price points i wouldn't even recommend one that's personal to your taste and budget but definitely something i recommend looking into especially if you've been thinking about it i don't know if you guys saw the houston rodeo but it looked like a blast and let me tell you fellas and ladies who are out there i know a lot of y'all y'all too cool to jump on the trans and you're like man i'm not wearing no cowboy just because hey listen to me find a way to make it your own look you see bum b was out there Find a way to make it your own because the ladies will be throwing western style parties, they'll be blind dancing, and you'll be sitting on the sideline missing out because you're too cool. So, go find yourself a hat. Again, price point and style is up to you. Get a western shirt, some fringe jackets going on and whatnot, you know. Get a belt buckle, bolo tie. Look, we're working on something now, man. Yeah, put it all together like that there. Or, you know, some kind of way and look at you. Here we go. Boom. There you go, right there in the mix. Not missing out on the parties, not on the sideline, not being too cool. I showed some casual looks with these trainers earlier, but we still need to get some track suits going on. You know we love our athleisure, so we'll start with Adidas or Adidas Wells Binder collabs. Either one you can't go wrong with. If you're looking for a pattern with a little bit more pop, the Wells Binder mainline you can't go wrong with. She has a way of making her clothes look retro and modern at the same time, which I love. Needles tracksuits, my absolute favorite right now. Looks good on everybody, and I mean everybody, no matter the height, shape, size, shade. Trust me with this one, go with needles. Uh, Sergio Tacchini for a nice retro look. And they also have a lot of color blocking and uh, color combinations that you wouldn't find in other brands. Buy any of these and just leave the Nike text alone. Palace with these goalie jerseys. The graphics on these are phenomenal. That's a nice lightweight fabric that you're going to be able to wear into the summer. They also have these rugbies and racing jackets. I love the graphics that Palace is putting out right now. Just top tier stuff all around. Also, Martine Rose with the racing jackets and the sleeveless vest that she's put out. Really love that Martin inspired Martine belt. That's cheeky. Yo, Fresh Goods also put out a really nice Sherpa jacket. 
I'd definitely rock some black cargos and do the matching kicks with the matching top thing for the old days. I'd probably end up holding it till the fall because we're already past Sherpa weather, but this Arteryx jacket would be a lighter option. Supreme is making noise again. They recently did a drop with Mason Margiela 6. A lot of nice items. To me, the star of the show would be this white linen suit. Well, it's actually off-white, more of a sill or cream, but either way, it's fire. I know that Gap recently just dropped a whole new linen line with Tyler heading the campaign for that. So, I mean, linen's available everywhere. For a more colorful option, you can always go to Polo. They always have it for you. I really like that graphic polo that they have now, too. That's fire. I need that. One of my favorite lines to go to for graphic t-shirts is Unfinished Legacy. You can go check them out. Another brand whose art has resonated with me lately has been Kid Super. And that's honestly the best t-shirt that you can get is anybody whose art resonates with you, any creator that you support, any event that you attended, something that's personal to you. Now, YT's is different. Just get the Uniqlo U Airism tee. Don't, don't fight me on this one. Just trust me. If it's sold out, which it usually is, go ahead and get the Supima or Supima one. That they, they have nice colors. It's almost as good, not quite. And of course, you can always go with the GOAT, the Polo 3-pack. Never lost. And while you're at Uniqlo, make sure you grab some trenches, blue sign jackets, coach jackets, just some nice unbranded layering pieces because we're going to need those for later. Also good options here, the Dickies Eisenhower, the Carhartt Detroit, and the Bonobos Chore Jacket. Either of those would do, or all. I really like this houndstooth jacket from Bonobos too, especially with that lining, and trust me, it makes a difference. Then we can head over to J. Crew, get the giant Oxfords. These are the ones that you can wear without them going all up your crotch when you sit down. They'll be nice and baggy, but not oversized, you know? There's a difference there. Make sure you get a giant Oxford too. It just pairs better than any other shirt would with these. This part's important. Take both of those, some loafers, a watch. Go to your nearest hotel, rooftop bar, to find a single lady. Buy her a drink, have dinner. You'll get more value from these clothes outside. Now, if you can't afford Prada loafers and a Cartier watch, that's fine. You'll get the same effect for some GH Bass Weegens and a nice watch. Ladies, I haven't forgotten you. This look is universal. All right, back to the clothes. For a pop of color, I like to go with a sweater vest. And these are just three that I've gotten recently, but you can find any style at any price point that suits you. For cardigans, I've been loving everything that Corridor has been doing lately. And also Bodie. They've dropped these really bright. They also have a yellow and other colors too, but I just pictured this red one. Really nice cardigans, man. Also need some crew necks. There's no shortage of options. I love this beauty from Sandro with an alpaca blend. For all my pink and green girlies, they have this nice one from Asan Kisane. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong, but that's dope. If you're on a Zara budget, you're a broke at, and I'm just playing to have this one. Options all over, but for a one-stop shop, I like to just go to the floor. You can find your cardigans, your vests, your crew necks, everything right there all in one, honestly. It's one of my favorite spots. The trousers, the silk shirts, the knit polos, even the knit socks. They really have it all. So the floor, check them out. Uh, they're in collaboration with Lacosta also, so they have some really nice pieces with the most recent drop from that collab. That that blue is just amazing. And you see the houndstooth jacket, we can get that similar look with the Uniqlo that I posted earlier. Another brand who I like pretty much everything they drop is Aimleon Door. Literally 80% of what they drop, I would buy. If you're really into streetwear, or if you grew up on streetwear, but you're a full-blown adult, this would be a brand that I would look into because it has really nice transitional pieces for you. Or for us, I should say. And that red leather Ferrari Letterman is chef's kiss. I mean, A1. I could spend all day on Amy on Dior. There's so many pieces I would recommend from here. Honestly, that Ferrari jacket is one. This leather denim printed jacket is another one. But my favorite would be this one. Probably in the cream color, but this black and white does well too. Todd Snyder, where we'll find our big boy pants. We need something to step up from those giant chinos that we got at J. Crew. Todd Snyder's a good one. Also, these pants from Noah, those high waisted beauties. Burberry, Alexander McQueen, nice jeans from Acne Studios and Wide Project. Isabel Morant with the nice long carpenters. And if we're looking for something to show off our kicks, these Drakes and Golden Goose pants are perfect. Uh, if you're looking for something other than purple label as far as skinny jeans, I would say Subi. The other end of that spectrum is Studio Nicholson for a nice flare jean. Subi actually has all cuts, baggy, relaxed. I have a nice couple pair of relaxed jeans from Subi, and I'd recommend them easily. 
and a 90s loose jean from Gap will be my budget option here. Now we need to accessorize, and of course we'll start with the shades, and Oakley's been going crazy lately, you've seen them everywhere, also Luxola, really nice looking glasses, not too much of a budget breaker, really versatile too, you can never go wrong with a pair of yays. Um, I tend to stay away from Cartier, not just because I don't want to look like a Detroit drug dealer, it's just because I'm more of a Tom Ford type of guy, me myself. The way I dress just tends to go better with Tom Ford and glasses like that. Also, Lueve, huge on nose. That's just me and my style of dress. You can never really go wrong with Cartier, so I'll never speak down on those. And now we need a chain, a nice simple chain. Not the ice, that has its place too, but we need a nice simple chain that you can wear. The key to this is that you see it, but don't see it. You don't want it to take over the outfit. So whatever price point style you like, get yourself a nice simple chain, a nice simple bracelet. We discussed a watch, but get a watch. Also a ring, which how many and what style that's personal to your taste. What really matters here is, you've done it, my friend. We are here. Look at you. Killing look after look, after look after look. You killing so many looks, the days just start to kind of blend all into one big blur of flyness. And so, I mean, now you got this thing mastered and we done, right? Wrong. Listen, there's always another level to go. There's layers to this thing, man. It's like an onion. We haven't even touched on pleats yet. We haven't touched on blazers, bags. There's so much, but I just didn't want to overwhelm you right now. Plus, who knows? You might not want to hear this from me. So if you do, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know if there's anything that you just found for the first time on this video, or if there's anything that I forgot, because remember, this is not me talking at you. This is a conversation. I'm just kicking it off. I'm not the expert here. I look forward to reading and responding to all your comments. Until then, this is Mike DeWitt. This is Trip Drops. This is Live Mike. <laughs> See y'all in the next one.